Welcome to my channel and today we're going to discuss our latest install and I uh, just wanted to say please uh, to get the housekeeping out of the way uh, if you haven't subscribed please consider subscribing and uh, hit that like button it helps the algorithm so now with that out of the way let's get into the show what we have here is a Peerless 63 series um, I think it's a 4L which is uh, 383 square feet of steam and this was the boiler that uh, we replaced I have a video of it I'll, so I can remember to put the link below uh, for you to see what was here before uh, we're looking at about uh, 450 uh, square feet with, for that old one and that was definitely too large um, pressure troll set at the lowest possible setting of course it comes out of the factory at nine PSI when it bring it down to the low setting. Uh, we've added a um, quarter inch brass male T to uh, allow for testing of the pigtail. Uh, this is from the sight glass uh, plug. We put it in here, you remove it, you can add a low pressure gauge uh, or you can just uh, blow in here to check to make sure that's clear. You got your internal siphon gauge, uh, 30 pound gauge, which is generally not helpful. Uh, we have our uh, sight glass drain valve on here with a hose attached um, so that this can be this fitting here can be checked and kept free this is their skim tapping although nowadays it doesn't seem like uh, they have as much goo in these boilers as they used to so the skim tapping is kind of a afterthought uh, this is where you're supposed to put the uh, boiler drain so we put our full port boiler drain on here and um, that seems to get the water out uh, and any dirt out very quickly for a good flush uh, you notice it's not up on blocks this uh, the clearance is a little low in this this basement and the basement is a walkout so it's very unlikely to flood so we've come up uh, with an 18 inch three inch nipple it's kind of the reason why i like this uh, boiler uh, we don't have anything sticking out to the side so the footprint is relatively narrow and with a three inch outlet it does a nice job you just have to make sure that this turn here is 24 inches above the uh, operating water line so we have our first 90 and then we make a couple of swing joints to go into uh, this pipe here. Uh, and that segues into the idea that this particular pipe definitely was parallel parallel flow, but when they cut the, uh, the original boiler out and installed the one that we just replaced, this dropped a bit and was actually sloping in the wrong direction. So we've got it uh, jacked up just a little bit. You only need one inch and 20 feet uh, in order for it to go out and the water drain back to this wet return. It's going uh, out there and coming back here on this loop. Let's see if we can get a uh, good shot there. I've got a drain which it never had. Um, I don't know how they got away with it, but it, this, this uh, wet return was never drained from ever. I've got a, a crossover uh, to pick up the next unit. We'll go on the other side. This is the um, blocked flue switch. The customer had their chimney relined by Champion Chimneys, uh, some of the best people around. And um, this uh, is our hole that we have to drill in order to uh, run our test probe. This is the uh, commissioning test that over here for now um, this is the instruction sheet that, uh, that comes with and in this size boiler this is the call out for the pipe sizes and more or less a suggestion of the orientation so they have our second 3x2T it comes up 
And then there's another swing joint here to allow for alignment. It's the original threads. And then again, we uh, brought this up so it's pitching in that direction uh, where it wasn't before. So this is our equalizer line. Uh, the other outlet is plugged, and the customer has done an excellent job of uh, starting the insulation. They're gonna, he's going to really go into town on that insulation, and it pleases me no end to see that. Um, this is the relief valve tapping. Usually a 90 goes there, but we like putting a T, and um, so that way this can be opened and inspected, and then we have a quick disconnect there, so this can be removed and uh, possibly if it needs servicing. So this is the return. Uh, that's the boiler drain that comes with. We've just got it on this side so we can add water and flush across the bottom if necessary. That's our Hartford loop, and I use a stainless steel Street 90 there for corrosion resistance, as well as I use stainless steel where it goes in. Now this, the outlet is two and a half. I've got it pushing down to two. Uh, the instructions call for inch and a half, so I made I go a little bit bigger. And then this is our swing joint here, which allows for expansion and contraction of the header. Now this is our Hartford loop, and this is the return, and this is where things get a little interesting. Um, we got a little leak here on the uh, failure point. This is where the fresh water was added for so many years. It eventually just wore that out. So this section of the pipe here is gonna have to be replaced fairly soon. We've got our drain, uh, four port drain there. And that's the crossover from the other side of the wet return as, um, as described. And this is where we're feeding our water in. We've got a, a, a bushing here and another brass fitting. We've got it in ProPress. And um, this is a drip line here. And this is our VXT manual bypass. And we have our shut off valve here for servicing. This is a, a 3 8 male by female Webstone. And uh, I've got the uh, unit on, on reverse. I uh, discussed that on other videos. And this is the manual feed there. And we got our shut off over here. Um, this is a uh, galvanized. Eventually, it's probably going to be have to be replaced. So I've got uh, which, a shark bite fitting there, which allows for somebody to come along and remove it quickly without a whole lot of nonsense. The trouble is with with ProPress is that uh, it is um, irreversible. So I like to leave plenty of room for cutting and adding if necessary. I've got uh, split rings to work. Um, Peerless likes to run 120 volt low water cutoff even on their gas stuff, so the VXT has to be 120 volts there. Um, this is a vapor system, and it's uh, Hoffman. So this is a two-pipe steam system. Um, you have, of course, the supply. You have then the dry return. This pipe here is the dry return, picking up the... Uh, uh, air and water from the radiators, and all of the air is exited through that Gorton number two that we added some time ago. I think you'll see it in the other video if you watch the other video on the uh, system was here before. Um, bring up a few points here. This is the Hoffman data book. Let's see if I can get rid of that shadow there. Here we go. The Hoffman data book. And it's from uh, 1925. And it's got all the piping arrangements and how to size the system um, in the old days. And uh, there is a discussion of the earlier, their earlier version of the differential loop, and this is how it's supposed to work. And this is the uh, guarantee. They say, uh, uh, the system is guaranteed to heat all rooms, et cetera, et cetera, to 70 degrees, et cetera, et cetera. 
to a temperature with a temperature outside of blank and because you know, didn't know where this was going to be done we usually go at zero and then the pressure that it would ever work would be eight ounces so with no noise and at a very low pressure so that's what uh, this system was uh, uh, designed to do customer again there's uh, through that insulation uh, and that is going to really help so uh, I think I think we've covered everything um, and I really thank you uh, if you wouldn't mind uh, again just, uh, treat me a like and uh, if you find this uh, boiler uh, this uh, helpful uh, consider sending me a super thanks uh, see you on the next one stay safe and Happy steaming.